All right, in our last video tutorial, what we did was we made these animations for our character to be able to move around. We set him to a, a, a state of idle, which is this, and we've said that if our move speed, which remember we've created as a variable um, with our player move speed, if that's greater than 0 0.1, we'll, we'll use this player walk animation, otherwise it'll default back to being player idle. And if player jump is pressed, which has a jump speed of, of 1, and we're actually doing the um, is grounded check, which we create as that, that boolean value. If, if it's not on the ground, we'll play this animation, and it'll default back to the player idle. So we need to programmatically put this in now. And just, just take a moment to remember that the original computer games weren't made with these beautiful graphical interfaces where we could see things in real time. It was a constant matter of writing with code and testing it constantly so it would have taken a long long time anyways let's move on so project and I'm just going to open up my player controller script in here um, and I might just set my player to be visible uh, and the animator as well might just help us uh, see what's going on in our project it's probably a bit better there so on my script um, we've got the the float of move speed and we've got the um, the bool of is grounded and if we look on the left remember we created this in the last lesson in our transition that we've got a speed parameter or grounded and if the speed is greater than 0.1 player walks and if the is grounded is ticked then we jump animation so programmatically we'll put that in so the first thing we need to do is declare a new variable up the top and we'll call it a private the reason we'll do a private is if we don't need to access this from any of our other scripts it will um, help us keep our user interface a little bit cleaner as, as much as possible. So we'll call it a private and it's a data type animator which is what we made in our last lesson and we'll give it the variable name of my anim, short, shorthand for my animator and remember the camel case, no spaces and a semicolon to fix that. Next we need to initialize it so when the program runs we need our program to basically look up what is my anim referring to? So we need to say my anim. Whoops, my anim. And if I just press tab, that will um, <clears throat> preload the the variable for me. Equals and it's capital G get component component. Great. And I can press tab again. And now I've got these um, less than greater than signs. So they're brackets as well. So I'll just open up my bracket. An animator. That's the data type we're linking up. We'll just close that and we need our normal parentheses and a semicolon to finish. Okay, and this allows us just to link up this variable with the data type, which is down here. All right, so the next thing we need to do is make this happen in our code. So what we might just do at the bottom of our update, which remember just runs constantly, uh, we've got our three curly braces here at the end, we might just work after our last if statement, so just press enter a couple of times so we can we can see it. I might just put in some commenting, um, animation script, and we can see how this all sort of works out. So what we need to do is we need to do my addim, which is declaring our variable, dot set float. Okay, and we're just going to be setting the the speed, uh, the speed that we're using. So in order to do this, we need to open our brackets, and I've shown you this before that we've got these different functions. This is actually what we want. We're going to declare a string name, and we're then going to give it a, a specific value. So our string name is going to be speed, which is what we created when we were creating our transition between the player idle and player walk. So we put it in quotation marks in speed okay and then it says do a comma afterwards um, so do a comma great and it needs a float value now we I guess could give it a, a number right now but it's not really going to be very handy when we want a dynamic game so really we're just going to take the value from our rigid body which we did um, same as above up here however We've made our animation only move when the speed is greater than 0 
So we want to basically flip our number so it's always a positive number. And to do that we need to do a mathematical function and thankfully Unity will cover that for us. So if we do math f, so math function, and dot, and we're going to do an absolute. Okay, and this is what makes it be a positive number only. And then we need to identify what we're actually talking about still, because we're still looking for a float value. So if we do this in a set of brackets, it's now we're referring back to the my rigid body. So my rigid body, I'm just press the down button and tab, my rigid body dot velocity dot x. And we need to have our two closing brackets, and we can just see that these highlight when I'm identifying what I'm closing off. So this one will pop up in a sec as I press the right button. Great. And semicolon. So what we're doing is we're taking the velocity, which we've already had the input of, in our x-axis, which is left and right. And we've made it a positive. So if you're moving to the right, it stays as a positive, And if you move to the left, we take that speed, but not the direction. And this only affects our, our animation, hopefully. So I might just put another comment in. Um, um, math f dot abs is a way to return a positive number. Okay, uh, and we just need one more line of code to get this happening, and we need to do this grounded thing. So we've created the variable is grounded, and we've got the little ball sitting under the radius ball sitting under our player's feet. So we just need to do our ground check. We do my anim dot and this type this time we're working with a different data type type it's set bool and brackets and we'll get our hint again. So we need a string name and a value. So in this case we're talking about this string, so it's grounded and note the capitalization grounded if I wrote that as all capitals. This will not be able to talk to this. Okay, it needs to be hundred percent correct. And I think some people have seen that issue before. So grounded, it's from over here, and we need a, a value. Comma is grounded. So we're just simply saying we're going to say we're on the ground unless we have this area. And therefore our animation should work correctly. So I might just save this, control S. And we we'll go back to Unity now. And if I press play, hopefully we can see this in action. Now I've just got my animator window open, so if you need to, you can go to window and animator and keep your animator window open. And we should see the speed might change and our grounded. So it's currently ticked because we're on the ground. If I jump, that should untick. Great. And our player jump is animating. Okay, so it's constantly updating, which is great. And now let's just check the walk. So we'll go to the right. Great. Oh, the left. Oh, that looks a bit funny, doesn't it? So our player walk is happening, and our speed is changing, which is good, but it's kind of walking backwards, and I've just fallen off. Okay, so what we need to do is, is just look at how we can make this guy walk right and left, because he looks a bit funny there. Um, and I'll just pause my game here so we can play around. Uh, essentially, all of our objects have got this transform window and I've spoken about this before we can tap into this and change it and we've already created our player walk and player jump to be animating to the right so we can just figure out a way to use our transform to flip our character around that will really help us save a lot of time both with having to create another line a few lines of code and creating more animations so if I just move my rotation on the x-axis because we're moving left and right um, what's happening here uh, okay, that's probably the wrong type of flip, isn't it? Okay, well, so we'll reset that to zero. Not ideal. There we go. Uh, what about we change our ro our Y rotation? Okay, that's pretty cool, but again, not, not appropriate for our character. So maybe if you were doing a coin animation, you might want to play with these two values. But if we change our scale, uh, look at that, we can see that he's flipping over. And although we've got a, a 2D game, you can still appreciate the fact that the sprite has some level of depth when you can notice the change in size. So basically we're starting at a 1 
And if we flip it to, if I just put a minus button in here, it'll be hard to see, you know, you can only really tangibly see on the video these two bits change. But that's all we need for right now. Okay, so we'll put that into code. We need to change our player.transform and our local scale. So programmatically, let's go back to our script. Uh, and in our script, we need to identify, um, you know, where we're moving our character already. So we've got our move speed here, which is good. So we might just continue working in here. So we've got the if input, and if we move into the right, this is what we're doing. And we'll do a new line underneath. Okay, so we're moving to the right. If we're already jumping, we're still jumping, and we're not moving in depth. And what we're going to do is, um, so it's a transform. Transform dot local scale. Now, interestingly, in terms of capitalization, let's just have a look. Transform dot local. Okay, so if it's a capital T, it won't come up. Okay, so you're going to make sure it's the lowercase t. Um, the capitalized is a class compared to the lowercase, which is a. Um, let's have a look. Um, program compared to a class, okay? So lowercase in in this instance, so transform. The hint was in when I went to transform dot, if I can't then type local scale, I've obviously done the wrong T in transform. So it's transform, and we're talking about the local scale uh, because we're talking about our specific player that this script is attached to. Let's press tab. And what I'm going to do is say equals new and it's going to be another vector 3, same as above. And the vector 3, if you remember, has three values. X value, Y value, and Z value. And we want to be specifically setting vector 3s, so even though we're doing a two-dimensional game. We want to force it to be a vector 3, so that in no instance do we have our Z variable moving around. Okay, so I'll just tab through. I need to open up my brackets. And it's pretty simple. What we're going to do is... We're saying if we're moving to the right, we want to stay in this scale and position. So we just simply type in 1f, because we're doing a float, comma, 1f, another float for our y, and comma, 1f. We want to declare that our scale doesn't change if we move to the right, and we want to set this as being our default value. So semicolon here. And then I need to go into my else if. So else if, if our speed is you know a negative, we're moving to the left, and our move speed's moving in a negative value to the left. We need to flip our character here. So pretty much the same same line here, transform, lowercase, dot local scale equals, and it's a new vector, oops, vector three. I'm just using the arrows to get around my menu here. Uh, brackets. In this case, we want to flip our player on the x-axis only, so it's a minus 1f, and then we keep it as a constant on the y and the z value, 1f and 1f. Alright, if we put a semicolon on here, in theory, if we save this and if we've done it correctly, we won't get any errors down the bottom. Good, there's no errors. And hopefully when we run our script, we can move to the right, no worries, we can jump still. Now if we move to the left, great. That works. Okay, awesome. Now, potentially we run out of um, camera space and we might need to look at doing that in a later video um, because it's cool, we've got our game doing something. Oop, fell off the edge again. Um, <laughs> two things we probably need to do is we need to be able to kill our player when he falls off a, off a ledge and we need our camera to be able to follow us so we can actually create a game. All right, thank you.